Hi, this is Doug Olenek, online editor for SC Media, and I'm on the floor at RSA 2017 with Aran Ashkenazi, Vice President of Field Operation, Operations and Services for Sentinel One. How are you today, Aran? Oh, thank you. I'm good, Doug. How about you? Doing very well. Uh, Aran is going to give us a demo, and I'm just going to let him explain what's going on. Thank you, Doug. So what we're going to see here, basically, is a very sophisticated attack, which we believe that was used in the DNC hacks, as well as the recent um, uh, enterprise breach that was seen on 140 enterprises or so, uh, recently published by Kaspersky Labs. So we're going to utilize a tool called Empire, which is a partial post-exploitation tool, and we're going to see how our product basically is able to uh, detect and protect against it, based on a policy. Excellent. Perfect. So the first thing I have here is basically a couple of machines. I got our Sentinel-1 machine, uh, an endpoint machine, runs Windows 7 with our endpoint, uh, an attacker machine that runs the Empire, and a console that basically logs in uh, to our management consoles and shows us the ability to set up things like our policy, which is currently set to alert. So I'm setting it to alert because I want to show you kind of the bad stuff that hackers can actually do. We actually have Empire set up and I have one active listener, which means that the server is actually awaiting connection. I can choose any mode of transportation to take that bad PowerShell code and inject it into my target. I chose to use a macro inside a document, right? So I'm going to double click that document and just imagine that you get this document as part of, you know, potentially just any type of spear phishing email or anything like that. And whenever you're ready, you're like, well, you know, I definitely want to see what's inside of it. So I want to click the uh, uh, enable content to enable the macros. And while you do that, that basically initiates the code, the partial code, which then in turn basically is detected by our solution. And what we're going to see is a pop-up that basically says, hey, you know, we saw the malicious behavior, and if the policy were aggressive and saying kill or quarantine it, everything would be gone here. But in this particular case, we actually want to show you what an attacker can actually do with those things and what really happened on those recent attacks. So if I go to agents, for example, and I interact with one of those agents, I'm able to get information on that agent. Now, not only that I'm able to get information, I'm able actually to perform commands. In order to do that, I'm going to escalate privileges. I'm going to make myself an admin. So what I'm going to do right now is to bypass the UAC. And when I do that, I'm get actually running a command on that remote target. That remote target will bypass UAC, meaning allow me to be a, an administrator. So now it's active. So if I do basically go back to the list of agents and interact with our second connection that we got from that machine, I can show you that I'm actually an admin. So being an admin means that I can do anything I want. And that is where it says here, iIntegrity1. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to run any command. And that means, for example, I can take a screenshot of that remote machine. So I can go and run something like use modules. And there are like 160 modules in Empire, right? Collections screenshot and I can actually take a screenshot of that remote machine that means that whatever is on that remote machine is actually going to be right now on my machine on my attacker machine so if I you know copy this particular PNG file for example and I run it in a different window I'll be able to see exactly what the user is seeing on his machine so that's kind of scary definitely let's put it here just for the sake of demonstration. And when it runs, guess what? I'm seeing exactly what the end user is seeing. Now, I can do all sorts of bad stuff. I can grab credentials. I can do, you know, a lot of bad things here. So let's do one more thing here. Everybody knows Mimikatz as a password credentials scraping tool. And when I run Mimikatz, that actually runs it remotely in the memory only and uh, exports all that credential information here on my own machine. So this is kind of scary. Now what Sentinel can do in order to protect against it is actually detects not only the initial back connection, but all of the additional actions that are taken. Actually, if I go here to the top, I can show you that I do have uh, the actual password and my password is I am Groot, right? <laughs> on the uh, known uh, idea of, of the guardians. So going back to my dashboard, I have this one thread here that says executive compensation. I can actually analyze it and see extensive information about it from you know, where it connected to, to the attack overview and the high level malicious categories, to a full blown attack storyline and just kind of drill down on exactly what happened throughout the attack, what did PowerShell run, what kind of events we've seen, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually, again, based on the policy, you can actually define that you want to run a particular uh, action. For example, I can say, hey, I want to remediate this threat, click continue, and that will send a remediation command to the agent. If I go back, 
what will happen is that once the agent gets that remediation command, it will kill and quarantine any threads that are associated with that particular thread. So that basically means that if you set the proper policy in place, you can actually have not only detection, but also protection. So WinWord was killed and the executive report document disappeared from my console. There you go. You have detection, you have protection, and that is totally based on behaviors. It doesn't based on any type of file or any type of signature-based uh, protection. Uh, that Super interesting and also very important now because there are so many more fileless attacks taking place using uh, attachments, correct? Yes, exactly. I mean, you know, we're seeing them more and more. People initially thought that it's just enough to have pre-execution and some of the vendors out there are focus focusing primarily on that, but we're actually treating that just as an additional feature. So we do have the pre-execution mathematical-based det detection and protection mm -hmm. with no static signatures, but we also have what we like to call our crown jewels, which is the behavioral engine that kind of does all that fancy stuff, tracks memory, process, application, registry keys, everything basically, mm -hmm. giving you that full layered protection. Wow. Great. Well, Ron, thank you very much for the demo. Oh, thank you. And again, this is Doug O'Lennox signing off from RSA.